You're listening to ABC Radio Hobart. Now, you might have walked the Overland Track as a school excursion. A lot of schools do, and they seem to take the groups in the off-season for tourists, i.e. the sideways sleet and, and pitching tents in snow time of year for the school kids. I hope that has built you into the resilient adult you are today. Uh, but I, I assume you spent five days and nights, give or take, to get from Dove Lake to Lake St Clair. You weren't carrying your life on your back and running past Pelion Hut on your way. Unlike the entrant in the Cradle Mountain Run on the weekend, one day all of them did the lot. Now, Phil Beeston is the race director and participant in the Cradle Mountain Run. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, I'm well. Did you do the walk when you were a school kid? I've never walked it. Get Actually, out. I've never taken the time to go slowly, look around and walk the overland track. So you actually have no idea what the scenery is like? <laughs> uh, only uh, through running it six times now. So I've, I've, uh, whilst being on the committee and helping with the team that organised the event, I've run it six times and uh, have spent a bit of time up in that part of beautiful part of Tasmania. So do you get much chance to enjoy the view when you're struggling that much? Uh, it depends how much you're struggling, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the front, the people up the front of the field, which I'm not, I'm right in the middle of the pack, but the people up the front are probably head down, um, bum up and, and running as fast as they can. And, and they, some of the, our, our fastest runners uh, tend to do it in around eight hours, which is extraordinary, uh, whilst towards the back of the pack it stretches right out and our final finishes uh, any, in any year will always be around 15 hours. And I guess if you're taking almost double the time uh, as the eight-hour crew, you've got a little bit more time to look around and enjoy the views. Why did it occur to you to run the entire length of the Overland Track for that first time? Oh, I think someone once said about why climb Mount Everest, and they said because it's there. And uh, for myself personally, um, getting involved in running and enjoying the bush and the mountains, and uh, when I first heard about the Cradle Mountain Run, it just... Um, one of those moments where you think, wow, is that even possible? And you hear stories and, and uh, learn a bit more about it and, mm. and train hard for it. And uh, there I was, I think, eight years ago uh, for myself personally, while the event's been around for 40 years now, and uh, I haven't missed it since. Mm. What, what was that first experience like for you? <laughs> oh, it's pretty exciting at the start line. So we've uh, 60 runners each year. And uh, we start at 6am at dawn at uh, a little spot called Waldheim, which is up at the Cradle Mountain end. And um, given that it's only a fairly small event, 60 people, it's actually a pretty calm sort of start. Everyone's quite relaxed but excited and, and off your head in, into the, um, you know, the, the, the dawn light. It's quite, quite dark still. But, it's, yeah, it's exciting and you're just ready to head out there and give it a go. What um, kind of weather did Tasmania have on the weekend? The answer to that is every kind oh, of weather in this state on the weekend. It. How'd you go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. But the, the weather was extraordinary. We were keeping a really close eye on the forecasting and, you know, we knew it was going to be 30 degrees the day before and then it was forecast for heavy rain. And, and at the end of the day, um, we were quite fortunate. Um, it was hot on the Friday. I think it hit about 30 degrees in the park. Mm. Uh, but then most of the rain fell overnight, about 20 mil of rain. And so come uh, Saturday morning um, through to about midday, there was a bit of drizzle on and off, but it was really quite comfortable. Um, but uh, really wet and really muddy on the track. Um, what was that like underfoot? Well, it, it does soften the track up a little bit, but it does make it quite slippery. And uh, there was a few slips and a few little falls, but oh. no, no major injuries. And um, But, you know... Trail runners are a funny bunch of people, and um, I think they actually like the mud and the puddles. And uh, everyone uh, was telling wonderful stories at, at the end of the day of how deep they got in the mud or how wet they got and had a great time. Where did you manage to get mud spatters on yourself? Everywhere, uh, all over. So some, some of the puddles as you run through, you, you, you think they're only a little bit deep, but then you go up to your knee mm. and um, a couple of people, um, you know, have a little fall and... Uh, it's just all part of the adventure and the challenge. And like I said, thankfully, there was no significant injuries. And then we've actually had a pretty good run as an event. There's, uh, there's been some injuries and, and a number of people every year don't finish, but uh, never, never really serious type injuries. 
Phil Beeston, Fingers crossed. race director of the Crater Mountain Run and participant six times now. How tough is it just to get a start in the race these days, Phil? Yeah, well, that's a challenge. So um, the gentleman, Richard Pickup, uh, started the, uh, the idea of the event back in 1981 and um, in its first, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, he had to drum people up to, to, oh, to do it. Not these uh, days. No, these days um, entries go online and it sells out in um, under five minutes now. It's highly sought after event. It's, I think it's on a lot of people's bucket list and it's not heavily, we don't advertise it, we don't have a Facebook page. So people just hear about it through word of mouth and are mesmerised by the idea and, and they, they come every year. You're a special breed, you trail runners, aren't you? Uh, special is probably a good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strange, queer, uh, yeah, special. I like, I like special. Suckers <laughs> for a very impressive kind of punishment. What's the age range of people who are part of it? Yeah, that's really interesting. Like this year, our youngest uh, was uh, 23, mm-hmm. um, 23-year-old male and a 24-year-old female. But look, we had a, a 60-year-old male as well, um, actually a couple other gentlemen in their 60s. So it's a really broad um, broad age demographic and probably on average it's around 40. Uh, but yeah, really broad and it's male and female. Um, and it was really exciting this year. Uh, first overall was a gentleman from Victoria, but second was uh, one of the females, a female Tasmanian, Emma Flitner. And um, she's actually won four in a row now. Wow. Um, and so that's it's really cool. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, of the first 20 people to cross the line, it was a complete split, 50-50 male-female. Um, so, it, it, you know, wide range of ages and, and, and uh, male-female. And people come from Tasmania, from the mainland, and... Every year there's a handful of people that come from overseas as well. How long do you wait for the last person to come across the line? Um, yeah, well, we've, there's some checkpoints uh, along the course and there's some cut-off times. So that sort of uh, restricts that how, how long uh, people can spend out there. And so, so generally the people who have just made that last, last cut-off point uh, at, 60, at the 60-kilometre 60 mark, um, they'll generally be uh, in across the finish line by 9pm at the latest. No. And, and, and that's exactly what happened on the weekend. A uh, couple of people yeah, crossed the line just before 9pm and they were our last finishes. Did and we had 50, 54 finishes out of uh, 60. Nice. Yeah, there's generally about five or six that don't quite make it all the way through, but um, uh, 54 finished this year. Is there someone who's done it the most times who's the one to beat? Uh, there is, yeah. So there's... Um, as I mentioned, that there's been 40 runs now, so plenty of opportunities for um, repeats. And uh, Dave Ross and Doug Strofield currently hold the most capped uh, Cradle Mountain runs at 18. But, um, oh, gee. Yeah, a gentleman uh, by the name David Cole, he's uh, actually on the committee. He's one of the organisers as well. He finished his 15th run on Saturday. 100% strike rate, 15 out of 15. So he's closing in on that uh, number 18. And it, uh, how focused is he on beating that? Oh, he he, he downplays it, but I think uh, secretly he really wants to. He really wants to get that, uh, have the bragging rights. <laughs> how does your body feel when you get to that finish line? Oh, you're just ready to lay down and cry and laugh and have a beer and uh, eat food and sleep. All it's a it's an extraordinary feeling. Um, everything hurts. Uh, but you're overwhelmed with adrenaline as well and you're so proud of the efforts of yourself and, and your fellow runners who have just journeyed down the overland track. You know, most like you said, most people take five to seven days mm. and it's 80 kilometres and there's mountains, there's rocks, there's tree roots. Um, about a third of the trail now is, is timber boarding, so that um, uh, makes the track easier to run on than it used to be back you know, for previous to when it was installed, but there's still, you know, 50 to 60 kilometres of, of dirt and gravel and rocks and tree roots. And on a day where it's really wet, um, it can get quite slippery. So by the, by the time you get to the finish line, you've gone through all the emotions, you're pretty sore and tired, but you're really um, proud of, of your, your achievement. And one more question. Did you have to yell at any wombats to get out of the way? No, not wombats, but... Um, Snakes uh, often, uh, there's always some stories at, at, at uh, dinner, that, you know, the following night about snakes. Yeah, that's uh, a bit I, less I cute, Phil. Any. Yeah, I didn't see any this year because mm. it was quite cool. Um, but I did hear a story that someone did tread on one mm-hmm. um, and they didn't even realise. So thankfully no bad snake stories.
So how do people get in the know? Um, well, these days it's just word of mouth. Mm. Um, in the early days, it was, uh, like I said, Richard, uh, who mm. uh, founded the event, we had to drum up, you know, ring around, and some of his people that he knew in these running networks, and uh, word of mouth over the years, it's 40 years old now, and um, there's no shortage of people that want to do the Crater Mountain Run each year. Well, that, well, I can't give you any more information than he has. Uh, you'll just have to hear it from somebody who knows. Phil Beeston is a race director and participant in the Cradle Mountain Run. He's just knocked over his sixth 